Life Audio. Hello and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and at our website. And it doesn't matter that it is the third day of February right now. If you're listening to this and you're like, I've fallen back on my reading, but I'm listening. It doesn't matter. Go back and pick up the reading or continue. Just start where you are today and just start reading God's word where we are today. So it's never too late to start. Join us. We want to be here to cheer you on. We can do this. We can do this Mm -hmm. together. We can. We can. And that's what I love about our community, Trisha, is that everybody is doing it together. And it's it's just so exciting. It's because I I feel I feel uplifted. Like not only am I with you and encouraging you, but it's just so exciting to hear. I think I'm like a broken record on that one. I love it. So let's just let's just start. Today we are reading Exodus seven verses 14 through 25, and also Exodus 8 and 9. And today we are getting into the plagues. So I remember studying the plagues in Sunday school or hearing about the plagues in Sunday school, you know, when I was really, really little and was wearing all those cutesy dresses that my mom wanted me to wear. And um, those cutesy dresses, I'd always rip the lace off of and rip my necklace off and my mom my mom today when I wear dresses and I like to dress up today my mom's always like Michelle why wouldn't you do that in Sunday school (laughs) anyway sorry that's a total side note for where we're going today I'm picturing your little ponytails and your hair (laughs) okay so think about think about that little girl and that little girl was drawing pictures and trying to think (laughs) through the plagues I mean, I remember drawing a picture of a fly and drawing a picture of a gnat and drawing a picture of blood. And and I don't think that anything mm-hmm. could prepare you for these signs and wonders from God. I mean, there's just, there's no way, especially as a little five-year-old, I didn't grasp that. And I think even as I'm reading through it again this year, I'm not totally grasping it. I'm grasping it more than when I did then, but this is just this is a lot. So the first plague is blood and the river turns, the river Nile turns to blood and they had nothing to drink. Yeah. Nothing to drink for seven days, seven days. That river is blood. Ugh. Can you imagine the smell? Stinky. Can you imagine? I mean, just it, it no, you couldn't wash your clothes. You couldn't, you couldn't bathe. You couldn't do anything. And then of course, Pharaoh's magicians, they were able to replicate this miracle too. So Pharaoh's heart, he remained hard. And then we come against the second plague, which was frogs. Frogs everywhere. Think about it. Like it's as it says in the word, there were frogs in the bedroom and there were frogs in your bed and there were frogs in the ovens and there were frogs Mm -hmm. in the kneading bowls. I mean, imagine all of that croaking. You couldn't sleep. No. And the slimy, froggy, ooh, ooh everywhere. <laughs> ooh. And, and, then, and then, of course, the magicians were able to copy this too. So Pharaoh says to Moses, okay, you can take your people. You can take your people and worship your God. But then, of course, you know, five seconds later, he says, mm, no, no, mm-hmm. I've changed my mind on that one. And Pharaoh's heart is hardened. I mean, this is, this is a lot of going back and forth. This isn't just something that we learn in Sunday school and we're like, oh yeah, 10 plagues, 10 days. But this, this was a lot of going back and forth. Then our third, then our third plague was the gnats. And I hate gnats. I really, I hate gnats because they get in your face when you're walking, like, you know, hiking or, or even if they're in your house, oh, they're horrible. And so there was gnats everywhere. But of course for this, Actually, not, of course, for this one. The magician said that the gnats were of God and they couldn't copy them. Mm-hmm. But Pharaoh didn't listen to that. He nope. kept his hard heart. So next came the flies and Pharaoh says, fine, you can sacrifice to your God. But of course, we know that in the end, 
he said, no, his heart was hardened again. And then we had the boils and which would be awful. I mean, Job can relate to the boils yeah. and um, we have the boils and then we have the hail. I mean, it's just the, the plagues, they just keep going. And I'm, I'm just thinking as, as an Egyptian or as an Israelite, this had to have been such a heartbreaking process, especially as an Israelite who's waiting for God to free them, because that's what Moses had said, that they would be let go. And they're and you're sitting here going with all of this stuff you're watching. You're just like, when? Just when? Yeah. And so we have, they seem so random, don't they? Like blood, bloody river, <laughs> frogs, gnats, flies, a plague against the livestock, boils, hail. And I remember just hearing these in Sunday school and thinking they were random. Mm -hmm. um but i mentioned before that i wrote the elder sister which is the story about miriam yeah um and so as because i had to fictionalize these like you know it's easy to read over a couple chapters in the bible like okay blood okay frogs okay gnats but to write them in fiction i had to like my characters had to live through this and so i started really digging into it and they're not just these random things so the nile turning to blood happy was it's h-a-p-i not h-a-p-p-y but i don't know if you pronounce it happy but happy was the god of the nile and mm. this time of year when these things were happening the priest of happy would take sacred vessels with water from the nile and pour it out in the city of ramses as they're worshiping so in exodus seven nineteen, it says the lord said to moses tell tell aaron take your staff and raise it raise your hand over the waters of egypt all its rivers canals ponds and all the reservoirs turn all the water into blood. So it's not just the Nile, it's all the water. But everywhere in Egypt, will, or everywhere in Egypt, the water will turn to blood, even the water stored in wooden bowls and stone pots. And they would keep water from the Nile, they would call it their sacred water, and they would keep it in stone pots. So even that sacred water, as they're in the process of worshiping happy, is turning out blood. So God was basically saying, like, yeah, that happy God, he has no power over me. And then the frogs was Hask Hequit. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but Hequit was the goddess of birth, and she had a frog head. Hmm. The gnats were Set, the god, Egyptian god Set, and he was the god of desert storm. So the gnats were like a storm of gnats that came in. The flies, um, Ray was the sun god, and the sun was blotted out by the flies. And then there's the death of the livestock. So Hathor, Hathor was the goddess and she is represented by a cow head. We often seen like ancient Egyptian writing. We'll see mm -hmm. that cow head on this god goddess body. Um, and then a Apis was the bull god, which is a symbol of fertility. The boils, Sekum Sekumet was the goddess of power over disease. And then Nut or Nut, I don't know how you pronounce that, was the sky goddess. And Orisus was the god of crops and fertility. And so basically all these things, like you mentioned, I learned them in Sunday school too. I just thought they were random, like, you know, it blood and flies and gnats. But these were representing their main gods that they worshipped. And he was like, basically like, pow, that one's not powerful. Zam, this one's not powerful. Mm -hmm. Look at this. This one has no power. The Egyptians knew exactly what god was doing it wasn't this random thing which writing that as a novel I was just like so excited because it just gives you a glimpse that God was really showing how powerful mm. he truly was that is that's is so cool that you bring this in Trisha because it does help us to understand like you said are we know that God is not a random God. We know that God is very purposeful in everything that he does. And yet it seemed like these plagues, this is, this is weird, God, like gnats, really? Like, couldn't you have done something else? Locusts, really? Couldn't you have done something else? But this makes so much sense. And that God is like sitting back there going, I mean, we don't know if he was, but like, <laughs> ha, 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 I got this. I totally got this. It, it's just, it's so cool how when we study, when we truly study history and find things that were like, 
oh, this is so cool. So thanks for yeah. sharing that today. Hey, we need to take a breath. We need to take a break, a quick break, because I need some more water, maybe another sip of coffee or something like that. But uh, we need to hear from our sponsor, and then we'll be back with the word of the day. Stay tuned. This podcast is supported by Morgan Stanley. At Morgan Stanley, we see the world with the wonder of new eyes, helping you discover untapped possibilities and relentlessly working with you to make them real. Because grit and vision working in lockstep puts you on the path to your full potential. Old school grit, new world ideas. Morgan Stanley. To learn more, visit morganstanley.com slash why us. Investing involves risk. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC. Hey there, it's Nicole Eunice from the How to Study the Bible podcast, and I'd love to invite you to join us as we weekly discover a passage of God's Word together. From beginning to end, from principles to practicals, we are here to make sure that God's Word is powerful and relevant to your life. If that sounds like something you're looking for, I would love to invite you to subscribe. You can go to lifeaudio.com and search How to Study the Bible, and we'll see you there. Oh, my water didn't turn to blood. Just so you know. <laughs> Glad your water didn't turn to blood. Oh, so the word of the day is show. Exodus seven seventeen says, so this is what the Lord says. I will show you that I am the mm-hmm. Lord. And he put on a show with these plagues. Hmm. But it was for a greater purpose. Pharaoh needed to know that Yahweh was the true God. Moses needed to know that God was powerful and the Israelites needed to know this too. Remember they were like Mm -hmm. complaining, like, why are you doing this? Why are you just making things worse? Pharaoh and Moses, Israelites, Egyptians, everyone was able to see the powerful hand of God. And I think so many times that we need to see God and we need Mm -hmm. to see him at work and he will show us. Yeah, he will show us. You know, I think of uh, three years ago, I was serving with Family Life in Little Rock, Arkansas, and they were, Family Life was in the midst of moving their headquarters from Little Rock to Orlando, Florida. And I didn't feel God calling me to Orlando. So that meant that I would need to resign from Family Life and find a new job. And my life was sort of like topsy turvy. I just didn't know Mm -hmm. where to, where to go. I didn't know what was happening? I was kind of like midlife. And so it's just like, where are you taking me, God? And, and it was a really long process. But eventually, I got a position with um, Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth's organization, Revive Our Hearts. And for family life, I, w- I needed to raise support to be on staff with CRU, Campus Crusade for Christ, and, um, and approach individuals and churches to um, come alongside me and give financially. And I needed to do the same at Revive Our Hearts. And I just remember when I I got the amount that I was supposed to raise, just sitting there going, I can't do this. I I cannot do this. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have to. Trisha, this this is really a point in my life where I felt like, looking back on it now, that God... Like when you're talking about how he just shows off, mm. he he showed off to me in the fact that I had people coming out of the woodwork contacting me going, hey, we heard that you have a change and that you're still having to raise support. Would you come over for dinner and then we'll talk to you about what we can do, how we can help you? And God raised a couple of thousand dollars and I didn't have to ask. And 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 I just remember crying in the shower one day going, Oh Lord, me of little faith. I doubted (laughs) you because I didn't want to raise this money and you raised everything for me. And, and then, then I'm, you know, Revival Hearts is located in Southwest Michigan. And so I'm moving and housing was an issue. Um, I'd always rented or lived among roommates, but I really wanted to buy my own home, but I didn't know how I could. And this was two years ago when the housing market was crazy and people were bidding on houses. And I looked at maybe five houses in the Southwest Michigan area. And and the next day, within 24 hours, several of those houses went 
for like 30,000 over asking price. Wow. And again, I was like, God, I just, I don't, I can't do this. This is my first home. I'm looking, I've scraped a, a, together my savings. I don't understand what's going on, but there was this one house and it was way overpriced. And, and it sat on the market for just a few, like a couple of weeks. And I went to my realtor and I was like, I really like that house. It was a cute little bungalow with some craftsman sort of style to it. And I had been wanting a bungalow like all my life. I thought this was really cool. But so I went to my realtor and I said, could we just offer 20,000 less? And again, this is crazy. This is in a market where everybody is, yeah. it's in a, everybody's in a bidding war. And that house that house was mine. The seller accepted my offer, nothing, no counter, no nothing. I moved into that house. And Trisha, I just remember my first morning sitting there in awe of, of, of God and the, and in, in, in just wonder of, of his power and how he moved things to get me there. Like how he raised that support without me asking, he had people just come alongside of, of me. And then, and then he got this house for me. Like, it just felt like God was pushing everything. He was just showing his power in my life. And now less than two years after that, I've sold, I closed on yesterday, I sold the, the house to another young single gal. I'm so excited for her, but oh. to a young single gal. And, and I sold this gem and it's so that I could move into the home that God has for me and my future husband, Joe. And, and I just look back and I just sit there and I see the hand of God and I see what he has done. And I'm just like, wow, God, thank you for showing me your power. Thank you for, for all that you've done. It, it's, it's weighty to think of how he does work in our lives. I love that how he just shows he there's those moments where he just wants to show us like look mm -hmm. what I have for you mm -hmm. and it wasn't like you were more deserving then than you were mm -hmm. before it's not like you did anything to all of a sudden like oh I'm gonna bless Michelle it's just like in that moment he wanted to show off and show you himself and provide those things for you and I think mm -hmm. that is just because it's a very like you said overwhelming moment when you have to think about a new job and moving and new housing and all those things that God just eased those burdens in a way yeah. that only he can. Yeah. Trisha, I have a feeling like we probably have a listener or two that are probably going through some of those moments right now. And um, they probably need maybe their eyes open to what God is doing. Mm -hmm. Could you, could you pray for them? Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much that we can look back and we can see you show off in amazing mm. ways. And we can see like, wow, your hand was so powerful. And mm. I think walking through these chapters, we just saw you at work so that the Israelites and so the Egyptians and Pharaoh and Moses, everyone could see you at work. But I know, Lord, that right now there is someone, many people probably that need you to show up and, and kind of show off in their lives. And we know that you are gracious to do that. And I just pray that you will help us to lift our eyes and help us to see you. And maybe, Lord, maybe you have been showing off and we just haven't been paying attention. Mm. Um, I pray that you will just help us to pause and to recall all the things that you have been doing in our lives. I mean, personally, Lord, forgive me that I'm not like praising you enough for all the things that you are currently doing in my life. So I just pray that, first of all, that we will remember um, your goodness, that we will pause and think about those things. And then, Lord, if there's another way that you want to show us um, your love today, we are open to that. I pray that our mm -hmm. eyes may be open to see you in amazing mm -hmm. ways today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have a link to that Bible in our show notes, and you can also find it in the Kindle format and listen on you version. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading that we are following. Tomorrow, we continue on with the Exodus story, Exodus 10 Exodus chapter 10, 11, and 12. 
And I just want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership. You wouldn't be listening to Daily Bible Podcast without Life Audio. Go to lifeaudio.com and you're going to find some other great podcasts to encourage you in your walk with God. They've got shows on prayer, on Bible study, on parenting, and so much more. So go check them out, lifeaudio.com. That's it for us today, but we look forward to chatting with you again tomorrow. So stay tuned. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Surgeons keep our hearts beating. They do the amazing, help save lives, and so can you. Your CSL Plasma donation can help create 24 critical life-saving medicines that can give Grandpa the chance for his heart to swell when he meets his new grandson or give a bride the chance for her heart to skip a beat on her wedding day. Every plasma donation helps more than you know. Do the amazing. Help save lives. Donate today at your local CSL Plasma Center and be rewarded for your generosity.